Git is a requirement for modern software developers today, and in this series we'll be talking about its concepts as well as its execution. If you're tuning in, this video, uh, can we? Of course. That if you're tuning in always, that gets me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you come in. My name is Joel from Atlassian, I'm on the Jira and Bitbucket team. This video series is intended to be a guide for Git, and whether you're a novice or an expert, we think we'll have something for you. In this first video, we'll be introducing some fundamental concepts. So let's get things going and talk version control. If you think of your file as a, a book that you're kind of writing collaboratively, it has chapters, it has pages, a beginning, middle, and end, version control helps you make changes to that while maintaining the entire flow and working with a team. It's a way to make changes to files without worrying that something's gonna get lost along the way or that things are gonna fall out of flow. Not only that, but it offers a backup and a history of any changes for any file line by line, so if you ever need to see why something became how it is, you can backtrack through. So let's walk through some scenarios where that's handy. Let's say you're working on a project and you accidentally delete a file. By using version control, you've got backup so you can recover that work and you don't lose anything. Now let's say you've been working on this project, you've been saving things and you get pulled off of it for six months. After those six months, you come back and what are the changes you made? Why did you make them? Version control gives you an easy way to compare the current version of your project to the version that you were building and really see what those changes were and try to figure out why. So if you made some changes to your project and you've committed those changes, you saved them, but you wanna see exactly what was changed compared to the main project, version control allows you to line by line see those changes and compare them to the base. Now, if you think you have a great idea for a part of the project and you wanna experiment on it, but you're worried about changing the main section of the project because you want that to be kind of in a good state, version control allows you to break off a section of it that lives in a silo, work on that, iterate on it, and then put it back into the main project if it works out or can it if it doesn't. Now let's say that someone else on your team thinks your idea is really great and wants to work on it with you. Both of you can work on the same files at the same time and version control will allow you to pick and choose exactly which lines from one person versus another person are used and which ones are canned. There are two main categories of version control systems, centralized or CVCS and distributed or DVCS. With a centralized system, the entire project stored on a central server. Each person sends their changes to the central copy of the project. CVS and Subversion are two well-known centralized systems. For the distributed system, the entire project, all of its history is mirrored on everyone's computer. Some examples of distributed systems are Git and Mercurial. In this series, we'll be focusing on Git. We'll explain more on this reasoning in a bit. You might be thinking to yourself, why wouldn't everyone want to use a centralized system? Great question. There are a few reasons. First, a distributed system is much faster. You take the performance of the network out of the equation. If you make a change to a file, that file's on your computer and the change is made. With a centralized system, every time a change is made, you have to access the server. Secondly, your team members don't always have to be connected to the network to be able to work on the project. Remember, every team member has a copy of the project on their machine, including the history of the project. Lastly, if you're interested in participating in an open source project, nearly all of them are using a distributed system. So why would you want to use Git? First of all, Git is small and fast. Since nearly all operations are local on your machine, it makes Git extremely fast. You're just saving a snapshot of the file you already have. Git's also distributed, so rather than grabbing just the file that you want to work on, you have the entire project and its history on your machine. That means that everyone else who's working on the project also has it on theirs. It also means there's a lot of backups in case anything happens, so you're always safe. Git uses a data model that ensures that you can always rebuild the project from all of its parts, so you never have to worry about anything getting lost. It also has a staging area. That allows you to line up files before you save them or kind of snapshot them, so you can make sure everything's ready to go. And finally, it's open source and free. That means that anyone can download it, anyone can use it, and anyone can contribute to it if they want to. Understanding Git will allow you to contribute in most open source projects. So before we start using it, let's understand some of the concepts. Some people call them repositories, we'll use repo for short. That's the base of your project. When you use Git, you're making changes to your files, you're taking a snapshot and saving those changes, and you're leaving notes that explains them. Then you repeat. First, when you create a repo, it'll have two areas, working and staging. The files that you're working on are working. You're creating new ones, editing ones you have, or deleting ones if you need to. 
After that, you line up those files and you say, I wanna save these for history, I wanna add them to the project. This is when you move into staging. Staging is where you assemble those changes and leave some notes as to what they're about. Think of it like we're collaborating on that novel again. You have paragraphs, you have sentences, you have chapters. You need to make sure they line up. You need to make sure they stay in order no matter what you're doing. Once you save and you're putting everything back into the main project, you're maintaining the history of all the changes that you made along the way. Now that you understand how it works, in the next video, we'll actually create a repo and start moving and editing files through those different steps. So that's it for this video. Tune into the next one to better understand how we actually get started.